This morning I would like to talk to you about grief. In fact, uh, the title of my sermon is Good Grief. Granger Westberg was a Methodist minister and about 50 years ago he wrote a little book entitled Good Grief. In the book he listed 10 stages of grief that we all go through and experience as we suffer loss. Later on, Elizabeth uh, Keebler Ross, Dr. Elizabeth Keebler Ross, wrote a similar book that addressed the same issues but distilled the stages into five stages of grief. This morning, I would like to share my version of the five stages of grief. Actually, any of us could write this sermon because we have all suffered loss at one time or another, and we've experienced these stages of grief. But like Granger Westberg said, when he lost his uh, loved one, he said, I had to go back and read my own book again because we forget these stages. The stages of grief are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. First, there is denial. Oh, this can't be. She was so young. Or I've taken care of myself all my life. How can it happen? I can't possibly have a life-threatening disease. She was such a careful driver. There's no way it could have been her fault. We deny because it temporarily protects us from the reality that is before us. Denial is what questions the doctor. Denial is what wants us to seek a second opinion. And by the way, most of the time we are encouraged to get a second opinion. Denial can be a student not making the debate team or being cut on the last day of summer practice. It can't be, I'm such, better, I'm such a better player than those other people. It's the coach's fault. Denial often produces shock. We stare at the wall in disbelief. We know we should cry, but the tears just do not come. When my father died at 4.30 in the morning, I thought it was just a bad dream until my, bed, until my brother and I went to the bedroom window and saw the hearse pull up the drive. Denial, shock. This is the first stage of grief. Where is the shepherd now? Then there is anger. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Baloney! This is when we cry out with the question, why, why, oh God, would you do this? If it's suicide, our suicide might have been aggravated by anger. How could you do this to me? And how could you do this to my family? If we didn't get the promotion or we lost our job, what a jerk that boss of mine is. I hate him, I hate her. Anger, how could you leave me with these kids to raise all by myself or to the doctor? Is that all you have to offer? There must be something else. Anger happens when there is loss of any kind. And it leads into the third stage, which is bargaining. If I would have just insisted he go to the doctor, I saw all the signs. I saw the signs and, and I didn't pay attention. I know I should have called him earlier. In an unwanted divorce situation, I'll be a better person. Stay with me. I'll get a second job to pad our savings or I'll dedicate every Friday night to nurture our relationship. We bargain to the boss who just fired us. Boss, give me another chance. I'll take more classes. I'll work overtime, and the bargaining goes on and on. To the student who failed the final exam, professor, let me take the test again. Just give me one more chance. To the gambler that just lost his wad, lend me a hundred bucks. This time, I feel lucky. I think bargaining and anger are closely related. In counseling, I always encourage the grieving person to get the anger out. It's a healthy way. For some, they beat up a pillow or they go to the gym. Some are able to work out their anger through their physical work. Thinking of their loved one all the while, they have their shoulder to the wheel. Then there is depression. This is when we draw into ourselves and hide. There is a lot of depression and anger as well. 
you see these stages run together and even intertwine. And we think we have gotten past a certain stage and then, uh-oh, it pops up again. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My enemies are those things that are keeping me from being truly human and whole again. Thou anoints my head with oil, my cup runneth over. God is there to supply for our needs as we go through this painful time of depression. When my wife was suffering with cancer and chemo, at one point she drew into herself. She isolated herself with her books. She later told me that sometimes she never read a word, but in her depression was able to hide from the world. A, psychi a psychologist offered this checklist when we are experiencing depression. We have little interest or pleasure in doing things. We are feeling down or hopeless. We have trouble falling asleep or maybe we sleep too much. We feel tired and we have very little energy. Our appetite is poor or we start overeating. Our weight fluctuates. We feel bad about ourselves and we have a lot of guilt. We have difficulty concentrating on things or making decisions. Our speech has changed. We talk more slowly or we are generally restless. We even consider suicide or hurting ourselves in some way. During this period of depression, it's often good to, to get some counseling, professional counseling. So there is denial and there is anger and there is bargaining and there is depression. And then there is acceptance. Acceptance. This is when we finally are able to face reality with grace and strength. If we are terminally ill, we say to the doctor, doc, it's time. No more therapy. To the student who failed the final, well, I can argue all I want, but I better register for summer school. Team A cut me, but Team B needs a second baseman. Acceptance is planning your own funeral, recognizing that there are things to do at the end of our life. In the last stages of my wife's illness, there was a PBS program on funerals. There were three scenarios a traditional service where the casket was open. There was a memorial service where there was a traditional service, but no body present. And then there was a graveside service where the ashes were buried. At the end of the program, my wife blurted out, I want a traditional funeral at the church and go ahead and leave the casket open. I would have never guessed her wishes, but it felt good I could follow through on what she wanted instead of playing a guessing game. Acceptance is coming to church on this Sunday, on All Saints Day, because on this day we celebrate life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Acceptance is that, that big sigh of relief. <sighs> Acceptance is that gratitude that we are supported by God's everlasting arms and our loved ones have entered into eternal life. So we recognize that when we suffer loss, there are five stages of grief that we experience. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. The good news is God is in the presence of all five stages. Amen.
we welcome you to the service of Holy Communion. We're at Mount Adams Pilgrim Chapel. All are welcome to Christ's table. It is His table. It is not ours. The Lord be with you. We lift our hearts. We lift our hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and a good and joyful thing to give thanks to you, O God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so we join in the heavenly hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. Men and women, youth and children, come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and gather at the Lord's table. The same night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and after he given thanks, he, said, he broke it. And he said, This is my body, which is broken for you and for many. As you eat it, remember me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, and again giving thanks, he said, This cup is a new testament of my blood, which is poured out for you and for many. When you drink it, remember me. Amen. a flower in the seed an apple tree in cocoons a hidden promise butterflies will soon be free in the cold and snow of winter there's a spring that waits to be Join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. Eternal God, we give thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go forth into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.